All right, the software engineering job market isn't just competitive anymore, it's hell. Layoffs everywhere, technical assessments that'll make your eyes bleed, and near 100% rejection rates. But here's the real question. How do you land a six-figure offer at a company like LinkedIn when it feels like the entire tech industry is imploding? Today, I'm breaking down the ultimate playbook for winning in this market. I sat down with Angel, an absolute killer engineer who just landed a six-figure role at LinkedIn, and we pulled out our five most powerful strategies to make it in the job market of today. My name is Amon. I turned six software engineering internships into multiple six-figure job offers. And I'm about to show you how Angel did the exact same thing, even in the broken market of today. Let's get into it. Okay, you're probably submitting hundreds of cold applications. You know what that's actually like? It's like showing up to the most exclusive club in the city with no connections, no guest list, nothing. Your chance is pretty much zero. Here's the thing about landing these fang level roles. It's not about always being the best engineer. It's about access, it's about leverage. And Angel, she understood this perfectly. Instead of trying to teleport straight from the ground floor to the penthouse, Angel did an internship at LinkedIn and treated it like it was the most important audition of her life. Because here's what most people miss. A successful internship isn't just experience. It's a golden ticket. It's your chance to lock in that full-time offer without competing against tens of thousands of other people. Listen to what Angel told me about the difference between going for a new grab role, cold versus leveraging that return offer. So for context, I interned at LinkedIn summer after my junior year. So that was kind of the first step to help me get that job position because um, when the job market was really bad, it's just really difficult to get interviews with a lot of tech companies and like all the interviews, they're like just really like they weren't giving as many offers, I feel like, but through the internship, I was able to really show like my experience and like how I was able to work hands on on projects. So that really just led me into my full time role. But before that, to even get my internship, I actually had to um, I. I went through like a series of interviews before that and I had other internship experiences and like projects doing research on campus. So I think that just like helped me build my um, career path from that. Hear that? Forget those endless cold applications. Forget grinding lead code in the dark. The single most underrated move you can make right now, secure that return offer. A return offer completely bypasses the application and interview hellscape. You're cutting out 90% of the competition. No brutal online assessments, no getting filtered by some AI bot. Why? Because from a company's perspective, you're low risk. They've already watched you execute for 10 to 12 weeks. They know you can deliver. You're not a gamble anymore. You're a known quantity. If you're still in school, your number one priority, and I mean priority number one, is landing that first internship, period. Because every single rung you can climb up that ladder, that's leverage for the next one. Now, understanding the power of return offers is step one. Let's talk about what Angel actually did when she was in the door. Because even in a terrible market, LinkedIn still had to give offers to somebody. They just got way more selective. What do you think separated the ones that did get return offers and the ones that didn't? Because you said it was 50-50 in your year. So what was the difference between those two people? Um, I think it's more just like, so we have like a rating system. So I think typically people would say like, if you exceeded expectations, then you would like normally get a return offer. It was like without question. So I think that's why it was like 80% of people would get return offers. But for that year, I think the bar was like a lot higher. So if you like far exceeded expectations, then you were more guaranteed an offer. And then if you exceeded, then it was a little bit more like they weren't sure just because they weren't giving out as many offers. So they really had to look at like the top, top candidates. So I think those people are just the ones who like did exceptionally well on their projects, like had good um, team dynamics. And unfortunately, it is also based off of your manager's like own scale because sometimes they'll like rate you differently compared to like another manager. Angel is not messing around. She graduated from Caltech, one of the most difficult engineering schools in the world, with over a 4.0 GPA. Now look, GPA isn't everything, but that level of academic performance at that school, that signals something powerful to recruiters. It screams competence, and it definitely helped her stand out when she was competing for that LinkedIn offer. You don't walk away from a degree like that without a system, without a method that separates you from everyone else grinding through their CS homework. We all know the standard college move, right? You panic the night before a deadline, frantically message a group chat trying to piece together the assignment with your friends. That gets you a C, maybe a B if you're lucky. And it definitely won't cut it when you're trying to exceed 
expectations at LinkedIn. Angel's approach, especially with Caltech's notoriously brutal problem sets, reveals something crucial about high performers. Master the material on your own first before you lean on others. This is about intellectual honesty, being brutally real with yourself about what you understand versus what you think you understand. That's what let her prove she could operate independently. And that independence is exactly what helped her exceed expectations when the bar was set sky high. Here's how our system works. One habit that I had was whenever we had problem sets come out, I would immediately take a look at them and start working on them on my own. Um, Caltech is really big on collaboration. So like on problem sets, um, some people would just like work on them like solely with other people, right? But I think that helped me develop more. I learned a lot more through that by trying to attempt these questions on my own because we still have like final exams and on your own. And and so you can't just like work with other people then, right? And so um, getting to take a head start on the questions really helped me. And then whenever I got stuck on something, then when it did come to the time where I would work on the sets with other people, I already had like the thought process going and we got to work on that together. So I think that just helped me um, kind of work through the problems. Um, and then on top of that, because I did get a chance to start looking at the set ahead of time I was able to finish all of my sets on time like I never had to ask for extensions and that just really helped me in terms of my schedule also because I played volleyball and that schedule just like makes it a lot tougher for you to like focus solely on academics all the time um, just like having that structure really helped me uh, be more successful I think that insight about mastering material alone first that's the cheat code that's what separates high-performing engineers from everyone else. This kind of preparation is what earns you a seat at the table in the first place. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, okay, I get it, I need to master deep work, I need to crush my internship, but I can't even get the interview, then you've got a serious bottleneck. Landing a high-paying job is a system. You need to stop taking random shots and start being surgical about it. That precision starts with building a bulletproof application profile, and that's exactly why I created the Software Engineering Accelerator. We don't just teach you to code, we teach you to win the entire game. We completely rebuild your resume from scratch, pack with metrics tricks and technical details that blow past the bots and impress the real humans. We optimize your LinkedIn to the max and use advanced networking tactics to generate dozens of high value referrals every month. And most importantly, we drill you with live mock interviews, technical and behavioral until you're absolutely flawless. So far, we maintain a near 100% success rate. Students land in offers at companies like Capital One, LinkedIn and MongoDB. And the best part is, if you don't land a job you want, you don't pay. So if you're done spinning your wheels and you're ready to lock in an incredible software engineer role, full time or internship guaranteed, check out the top link in the description and apply to the accelerator. All right, now that you've got the exact framework to convert your hard work into guaranteed offers, let's dive into Angel's next critical move, weaponizing the world's number one career platform. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Landing a job is not about coding skills, it's about marketing yourself. You could be the best engineer on the planet, but if nobody knows you exist, you're still unemployed. Your LinkedIn profile isn't some kind of digital resume that you set up once and forget. It's a directory with superpowers. It gives you access to thousands of people at any company you're targeting. Angel hammered this point home. Leveraging your alumni network and building genuine connections is your ultimate weapon right now. So what's the secret to actually using LinkedIn effectively in this hyper-competitive landscape? Just like building your network is really good and then like maybe you'll meet people through like those connections you know um and then like i think premium is really nice too if you are having a hard time getting responses i think you get um do you know what it's called like oh email God. yeah right? <laughs> I, feel I think like it's I funny how this. i know this but <laughs> in mails are the cheat code for reaching people you're not connected to if you're serious and you're getting ghosted linkedin premium gives you a direct line but let's zoom out. Angel mentions that posting is critical. So what does a good post look like if you actually want to get noticed? The best thing is just being genuine. Like a lot of the time I feel like people focus so much on what other people are doing. Like, like maybe I should like follow this specific structure because that's what other people are doing. But as long as you're like genuine, you're bringing something unique to the table, talking about your own experience, um, then like that's 
That's great. You want to maximize volume and quality. Angel's right. You should be reaching out to people, especially alumni. But don't just ask for favors. Offer value where you can, and don't be scared to invest in tools like LinkedIn Premium if you're serious. Because the ROI of a single referral can literally be millions over your full career. And when you post, stop sounding like a robot. Don't just drop the classic, I'm excited to announce, I'm starting at XYZ company. Post with intention, share specific lessons, give people an actual insight. That's what creates engagement, builds your brand, and gets recruiters to notice you. All right, so you land the job. You walk into the office on day one, grab your free coffee, maybe some snacks from the kitchen. You're expecting a clean task list, clear instructions, maybe a little handholding. Here's the reality check. Modern software engineering expects you to solve problems independently in a completely unstructured environment. There's no rubric, no step-by-step -step guide, and Angel learned this the hard way in her first few weeks when she got hit with a task that was scoped completely wrong. The first task that I was given, it turned out to be um, a bit more difficult than we had all anticipated anticipated just because like it was my first time joining I didn't really know the infrastructure or like the tools to complete this task and so I was working a lot like over time because I was stressed to meet this deadline I think the deadline was what was expected for like a senior engineer to complete because the same like a similar task was done by one of my teammates and they're a senior engineer they were able to finish it in like two weeks but they needed this like tasks to be done in like two weeks. So they're like, oh, can you finish it by then? And I was so stressed because I like, just joined, right? Did you get that? They gave a new grad a task designed for a senior engineer and said, yeah, just get this done in two weeks. That's the real world, folks. Unstructured chaos. You might burn three days working overtime only to realize the entire project scope needs to shift. That instinct that says you must hit the deadline no matter what, that's your school brain talking. In the professional world, hitting obstacles is expected. The successful engineer doesn't burn out chasing arbitrary deadlines. They communicate concerns, push back when needed, and manage expectations. You've got to stay flexible because things will change. Now, the job search, whether it's for an internship or full time, is an emotional roller coaster. You're facing hundreds of rejections and you feel every single one. Here's the mistake most high achievers make you fall into the arrival fallacy. We tell ourselves, once I get that big offer, then I'll be happy. Then everything clicks. But Angel realized that putting all your emotional weight on the outcome completely ruins your experience in the present moment. If she could go back and talk to her younger, stressed out self, what would Angel say? I guess I would say to like, not stress out so much um also just like take it all in and try to learn as much as possible because i think a lot of the time people put a lot of emphasis on like just getting the return offer right but that's just the end goal you should be focusing on like the steps to get there right and the steps are just to form those connections get to know as many people as possible and also learn about what else there could be outside of that which is just like talking to people learning about the other growth opportunities um and then just like also having fun you know i think that internship i was just really stressed because i wanted to get a return offer for full time and i knew that the job market wasn't good but just like really taking it in, like having fun, um, taking advantage of all that, because I feel like internships are not as high stress as some people may think that they are. The goal is a journey, not the destination. Angel figured out that the offer was just the finish line, but the real value was in everything she did to get there. The connections she made, the systems she learned, the knowledge she built. If you spend 100% of your energy stressed about the outcome, you miss the actual opportunity to network, to learn, to grow. Those things are the engine of your career. Angel's saying that if you nail the process, the learning, the relationships, even having some fun, the outcome basically takes care of itself. So stop treating recruiting like a life or death emergency. Start treating like a system you're methodically optimizing. And if you want a team of FANG engineers and recruiters to help you implement the system step by step by step so you land a high paying job or internship guaranteed check out the top link in the description and if you want the exact system i use to generate dozens if not hundreds of high quality referrals watch this video over here thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one